episode 98. Are these comics going to make good film and television shows? We got Batman, Superman, World's Finest. We have Iron Man, and we have The Unnatural Order. Let's check them out right now. How are we doing, everybody? Welcome back to the channel where we talk about all things pop culture. We talk about movies and television shows and comic books as well as the occasional board game. Fun, fun, fun. Getting so close to episode 100. It's awesome. Uh, so I have a special treat because uh, some books this week uh, don't even come out till next week. So you're going to get to see a special preview. Uh, and one of these is uh, World's Finest. And uh, so, yeah, if you... Uh, don't mind spoilers, then stay on watching. If you do, just come back after you buy the book, I guess. Because <laughs> uh, I go do go into the story of, of the book. Uh, so, I am your host, Frank Zank. I'm an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer. Uh, if you want to see anything that I've written, I am on Amazon. Just look up my name. Uh, and if you are a budding filmmaker, whether it be on the writing side, the directing side, the producing side, whatever, I'm going to be doing a filmmaking course uh, that's going to be on Zoom next week on the 20th and the 21st. Uh, you'll be able to get a early bird right now. Uh, the description below has the link. I'll be going to uh, how to uh, write to a certain budget, how to uh, produce, how to uh, budget, and how to schedule, and all that stuff. So it's going to be lots of fun. And I'm going to be going over with everything uh, over the weekend. So it's going to be a Saturday and Sunday, uh, three hours a day. So it's going to be uh, fun. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to ask questions and it'll be very kind of personal. Uh, it's only going to be a few pers people because I, uh, this is the first time I'm doing this. I kind of want to do it small so that if I mess up, I know what I'm doing. Anyway, the description below has the link. You'll get uh, $30 off right now uh, going through the early bird. So don't uh, don't delay. Um, anyway, it's going to be fun. So anyway, let's jump into uh, World's Finest with Batman and Superman. This is Mark Wade. I thought I had taken this off my pull list, but apparently it's still there. So also he pulled... I didn't want to say anything because I usually don't buy the hard cover ones because it's a dollar more for no reason. Uh, but anyway, here's what the regular... Dan Moore art looks like. So we have Batmite and we have Mr. Miximplick in this one. And uh, I assume that that is Dick Grayson over there as Robin. And uh, yeah, so it's the, the imps are having a ball here. In fact, they even talk on the credits. <laughs> So this, uh, this story is about, and Dan Moore's art is just very, very classic art. Um, but yeah, so it's good to see. I, we've never seen Batmite and Mr. Mix and Plick together, but I guess during the um, annual, I guess they had the whole Justice League. Imps are, the imps are copying everybody, whether it be uh, on the superhero side or on the villain side. So I guess there's villain stuff, and uh, Mr. Mixplit tries to be uh, all strong in front of Batman, and, and he cowers immediately. <laughs> but see, here's what I'm saying. There is a uh, an imp Sinestro uh, and all this stuff. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So they have to figure out how to, uh, how to beat these things. So... Because they're all obviously immune to each other's magic, I would have believed. So, but uh, Robin gets special abilities. So he's like Super Robin. Uh, and Abracadabra is uh, really messing with the Flash there. He's got swords going through him. Uh, so the whole Justice League is in trouble. And, you know, Abracadabra is forcing people to clap. So their hands are like pretty much numb by now. Uh, but Flash gets saved here. And the two imps go up against one another, and then you see Super Rob in there. And, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, this book's just fun. You know, there's no rhyme or reason to any of it, but you you could see, like, the imp Lex and the imp Joker, and uh, uh, I forgot the guy's name, that uh, Metallo, and all this stuff. So I guess there's, uh, you can even see an imp Catwoman up there. 
But I guess there is a guy shrouded that's actually pulling the strings here. And, you know, ba uh, Superman is not impervious to magic, but he says, hey, when I go into space sometimes, I wear a suit uh, that'll, you know, shield me from kryptonite. Maybe you can give me a suit that shields me from magic. And uh, Batmite, because they kind of swapped, because Batman's with uh, Mr. Makes and Plick and uh, Superman's with Batmite. And he said, oh, you just happen to have a suit? And he says, oh, it's for Batman's birthday. <laughs> But anyway, he's shielding himself from all this magic going on. And uh, Robin goes and beats up Sinestro. Uh, so a lot of good action going on. Um, and then I guess uh, Robin's having... Oh, oh, that's right, because he's now hearing everything, but he's got Superman's ability. But he hasn't learned how to use them, because of course it's his first few seconds using that. And he said, of course, you know, it took Batman, I mean, Batman Superman years to, to figure that out. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's the villain. I don't like when they put red uh, text. It's hard to read. So, yeah, so we got on to uh, Parasite. And Parasite now has magic where he's, you know, sucking everything in. And they made Parasite look pretty cool there, I thought. Parasite's one superhero villain that we've really never seen in Superman, like in the movies and stuff like that. Uh, and when they make him, like for television, they can't make a monster like that, so they just make him semi look human. Uh, but anyway, so he he sucks out their three dimensions, <laughs> so he he makes them now, uh, you know, two dimensional, and they're on the wall as pictures. <laughs> So whatever. <laughs> Will that make a good film or television show? Probably not a film because it's silly. But for an episode of a TV show or even a cartoon, yeah, that would be fun as hell. Uh, yeah, it's... Because, uh, again, you've never really seen those characters and all of the superheroes all being imped out and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that would be lots of fun, I think. it's uh, No, I, I'm enjoying the issue. It's just, you know, it's just dumb fun. <laughs> it's just dumb fun. <laughs> So I, I waited uh, for Iron Man for the next issue. Uh, so the next issue was on, but I had a big week that week. So I said, oh, I'll just pick it up on Saturday. And I left it. When I came back, it was gone. Uh, so I skipped an issue, uh, which I, I, I have on order. But now I'm like reading them out of order. Uh, so this is about Tony being married to Emma Frost because it was a big ruse. For, uh, I keep forgetting that character's name, something with an F or something. Well, Fei Long. I always forget him. Anyway, but I guess Fei Long is using Tony's armor, uh, the schematics and such like that, to create sentinels. And in the last, end of the last issue that I read, he had a sentinel buster that he had created uh, out of this uh, other uh, material which I forgot the name of also, but uh, anyway. So we start out with Tony having this kind of existential crisis, uh, which I think is kind of all in his head. But the artwork's pretty decent here. This is by Jerry Duggan, who doesn't know how to write X-Men at all, but for some reason he's doing a decent job on, uh, on uh, Iron Man. And uh, Zercher, uh, guest artist, Patch Zercher. Don't know him at all. So, yes, like I said, he's having an existential crisis. He gets out of the armor, and he sees his mom and his adoptive mom having coffee. <laughs> and their head turns into the old Iron Man uh, helmets. Very interesting. So, I guess he sees, like, his dad or whatever, and all these hands start pulling him down. Like I said, he's having an existential crisis. So it's all these villains, and they name all the villains. And then he finds, uh, he's, Magneto lifts him out of it and saves him. But it's not, again, it's not really Magneto. This is all going on in his head. And then he decides that he's going to kill Tony, so he crushes Tony. Uh, but again, everything's in his head. And then he sees, I guess there's, there's his father there. 
uh, and he's in the original armor. And his dad turns into a zombie, and he crashes down and throws rocks on him to bury him. So half this book is an existential crisis. Um, so he's getting out of whatever this grave thing is. I don't know what the hell that is. Helverine? You're just getting really weird with some of this stuff. And there's Fei Long there. And I guess this is the real part where they're now fighting. So, let's see. So I think, yeah, this, uh, this is really good. This, so we, this is basically all action because the first half is that all in his mind and he has this battle with Fei Long. And then he asks for help. Oh, yeah. So we have... Uh, I forgot what he called it in the, you know, something party, um, the house party. So the house party, so Fei Long calls all these Iron Man Sentinels in. And look at that, there's a Doom number one by Jonathan Hickman. I wonder how that's going to be. It's only a one shot, I may get that. But anyway, the Sentinels are attacking everything, and uh, all the X-Men are there, they're kind I don't know. Seeing Miss Marvel there is just very strange. But anyway, there's uh, Emma. And she's like, look, man, I'm busy. I can't really help you. But I sent somebody to help you. And Magneto shows up uh, to help him. So, yeah, it's been pretty decent. Uh, I kind of like it. Uh, it. I think adding Emma, even though I like Pepper... Um, I don't know if you've seen the other side of my room, but, uh, yeah. Uh, let me, let me turn it over real quick so you can, there's Pepper literally right there. Uh, so you can see that I, uh, I do like Pepper, but I do like his connection to the X-Men here. Uh, so if they do reboot it or bring Tony back or whatever else, but again, they're probably going to screw the X-Men up. I heard that the X-Men 97 is pretty decent, but, uh, I, I have a hard time thinking that Disney's going to do anything on the screen uh, live action. But I like, the, I, I like that just position of bringing uh, Iron Man into the X-Men. And not that he hasn't teamed up with the X-Men before. He's even teamed up with Guardians of the Galaxy before. So he's kind of like a wild card. He's uh, kind of like everywhere. Uh, but yeah, and having the uh, Iron Man armor mixed with the Sentinel armor, that's like pretty much genius. I, I kind of like that. So, yeah, it's been good so far. Um, and I think that it would make a good movie if that, uh, not particularly this story, but all the, like, the elements of this story reworked into a script would be kind of cool. All right, so let's jump into Christopher Yost's uh, big freaking book here. So this is five bucks, but it's a double issue. Uh, each one of them has been a double issue. And the artwork is, eh. So this is about, uh, this is issue four. And this is about a... I don't know if the guy's an alien or something from another dimension, but he has magic. And he was, he fed off this thing that, this experiment that these guys had. And he created this whole other world that's fantasy world. And these people are stuck in it. And they think it's real. And then they end up finding the only guy that's immune to what they call the druid. Uh, which is this guy from this this alien guy or from another dimension or whatever he's from uh he's the villain and they're trying to kill him and they find one guy that's immune to it all and the guy's dressed in fatigues because he's immune to the magic and his name is murphy so they bring him on as part of their it's like a D, &D uh you know party and they bring him out as part of the party and they're fighting dragons and stuff like that and they go across this veil uh, this energy veil, and they end up back in this world, and they're all changed back. And they're like, what is going on here? And some of them are not happy to be back in the real world. So we start out with seeing them all in their regular lives. So the top girl, who is like a Muslim of some kind, uh, she's wearing the hijab or whatever. Uh, she's the magic user. The guy is the Italian guy on next to down below that. He's the Roman. And then the uh, nurse below that, who just happens to have a whole lot of piercings, which is weird. 
uh, for a nurse to have a whole bunch of piercings. Uh, she is uh, like the um, the Viking. And then we have the Barbarian, who is like a butcher, I guess. And then there's like a taxi driver, Uber driver, who's from Ireland. Is he Ireland or Scottish? Uh, Ireland. So he's Irish. He's like the archer. And then you kind of see, you know, some of the stuff on the next one. You can see the Barbarian and stuff to that effect. And there's Murphy. And they're all like, what's going on? I don't like this. What is happening? Of course, somebody can even stand the Italian guy. <laughs> so, uh, as they're complaining, the three-headed dragon comes through calling his name. And they're like, holy shit. And the barbarian guy who's always like, yes, we will whoop their asses and blah, blah. He starts running away like a little girl. <laughs> But the uh, the dragon's not doing too well in the non-magical world, but it's still chasing them, but it's kind of falling apart. So they get into the plane, and the dragon's able to take off. And the biggest one that's complaining is the, mag the magic user. She, has a, she thinks this is all, uh, you know, a... a ruse. She, she's happier in, in the magical world. And she thinks this is all a ruse. And the uh, the Irish guy <laughs> gets on the guns. He's, <laughs> she's like, just pull the damn trigger. Meanwhile, it hits the propeller. Uh, you know, so the, so the thing's about crashing. But I guess he takes out the dragon because he shoots it a bunch of times in the head. And the plane crashes. And they crash and go through the veil. Because uh, you can see that last panel, they go through the veil. So now the barbarian ba is guy is back, and they're like, no, it was all real. And then we switch to, I guess, I guess they had just had a baby. She died in childbirth. I don't really know what happened, but I think that's what happened, is that she died in childbirth. Uh, this is Murphy's wife. And so we're getting to see a little bit of his, um, you know, his past. Not that it means a whole lot right now, but... It's it it has to do with the ending, right? So this this is all just a setup for the ending. So there's the uh, the magic user all pointing fingers, not happy about the whole thing, and they're like, "Look, we we know the other world is real. We have to go back there." But the magic user and the barbarian like the world here a lot better, and but the uh, the girl. Uh, who was, I think his name is Lucy or something. I can't remember her name, but, um, she liked her life with the baby. She's like, nobody's protecting the babies. Nobody's that. So she wants to go back like immediately. And the Italian guy's like, yeah, that's, that's real. So I think we should go back there as well. But, uh, they're, they're the only two. Uh, the other two were even the Irish guy is like, I, I kind of like it here better too. So the other doctor that created that thing is now a two-headed demon <laughs> in the magical world. So they go after this pod, and that's where they know that the other guy is. The, uh, the guy that created this whole thing, which they call the druid. So they walk in there, and he's playing video games. He literally has an Xbox. <laughs> they didn't even try to change the Xbox. He literally has an Xbox. He's playing video games when they come in. And, you know, we talk about his past, how he arrived here. You know, so that's why I think he's either from another planet or another dimension. But we see that stuff. And Murphy threatens him with the gun. And he's like, you can't really shoot me. Uh, I, I can destroy you guys with just a thought. <laughs> but meanwhile, he breaks his nose. And he's like... Yeah, your magic doesn't work on me. And he's like, yeah, but I can just blow the gun up in your hand and blah, blah, blah. And he says, oh, really? And he shoots him. He's like, oh, my God, you shot me. What are you doing? <laughs> so Murphy's not having any of it. And uh, uh, again, they switch back over to the magic user and the barbarian and the Irish guy who are now fighting the demonized version of one of Murphy's friends that uh, he worked with or whatever. So 
she basically just eliminates him with magic, which I think is just to show that she's just more comfortable in that world and there's just no changing that. So the guy makes a deal with him and he's like, look, I can bring back your wife and kid. He's like, what? And everybody else is like, don't listen to him. Take him out now. And he's like, oh, you should have killed me when you had a chance. But I will give you back your wife and kid. And uh, there's a knife that comes at him. And it's the doctor that created the thing that's also the two-headed witch thing. So she has like an axe on her back and stuff like that. And they talk about, you know, her experiment when she first met the druid and stuff to that effect, and I assume it's going to probably end soon, but, um, and he's like, I thought you said you are going to bring back my wife and kid, you're going to have to do that, or else I'm going to kill you, blah, 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 and he's like, no, no, I'm going to do it, and she picks up the gun and shoots him, <laughs> more, more probably, she's probably the only, the smartest one in this whole damn thing, so here comes the, uh, the three of them, I think they moved, yeah, they, they moved the, the veil, right, the magic user moved the veil so she could remain uh, in her magical form, but still see them. So she fights with the two-headed uh, thing, who is the other doctor, and that guy kind of explodes, the guy that got shot, he's trying to save him because he wants him to get, bring his wife and kid back, and... I guess like a dual thing is formed because if you look on the side here, it's got the actual cities that exist now, but on the side, they're all other versions of it. So I guess in his death, he created, yeah. So it's 2024 after Druid. So I guess it's dead. He's dead, but when he died, he misformed the world. And that's where it ends. And then it says, uh, to be continued in Natural Order Volume 2, The Hunting Party. So this is the end of this storyline. Uh, but I guess they're going to start up another one. Um, but I, I, it's kind of very convoluted. I think that it could have been streamlined a little bit. So would it make a good film or television show? Yeah, but it again, it needs a little bit more cohesion. I can tell that he's trying to draw this out uh, instead of like creating new characters or something to that effect. He's trying to draw this out. And I don't know if it works being drawn out. It should just end. Um, so he's already got enough for a graphic novel. You don't really need to keep going. But it's interesting. It's got some good stuff to it. Iron Man, yeah, this was... I think this would make a good movie. So... Uh, and this would probably make a good cartoon or a single episode if he were doing a live action Batman Superman. So, uh, so yeah, that's it for me. I uh, hope I entertained a little bit. Uh, remember to give me a, a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, and all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, if, uh, if you're into wanting to learn some more about filmmaking, uh, definitely join me. Uh, the Eventbrite link is in the description below. It's going to be lots of fun if you can make it. Um, I only have 20 seats available, but we're really not filling up right now. I'm not doing that much marketing on it. Uh, again, I kind of wanted to keep it small so that I've, I mess up on my first one. <laughs> Plus, it'll I, I can get a lot of feedback from you guys, and you guys can ask a lot of questions, and it'll help me, you know, streamline everything too. So, uh, so that's why I'm giving like the big percentage off and things to that effect. Uh, so yeah, and if you have any questions, may just you know you can DM me or whatever else. Uh, before about the event, I mean. And uh, also, if you're into card games, uh, we uh, are doing me and Mark Spears. Mark Spears does cover art for Marvel DC. He just did the Neil Before Zod cover. Uh, he's done Vampirella. He's done uh, Spider Man. He's done Power Rangers. He's done Spawn. So the guy, I mean, the guy's got a big fan base. He did a whole uh, thing on uh, classic monsters. So it's classic monster art, and we're creating a deck build area control. This is an expansion for that because it's called Myth Lords, is the name of the whole thing. And this is a Dark Wizard of Oz expansion. It's going to be lots of fun. Uh, so I'll be launching that soon. So also in the description below, you'll see like a link to that. Uh, so you can like sign up for when we launch. 
Uh, but yeah, it's going to be lots of fun too. All right, so check out some of my other videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking your time to watch all the way through. And I will see you guys on the next episode. Getting so close to 100. My God. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, bye-bye.